Every sinner has a future. Every saint has a past. We are all familiar with Saint Ignatius Loyola's past. He was a passionate and vain soldier, given to swordplay and romance. His love of court life and intrigue, romance and chivalry are well known. His quest for personal glory was unstated, as was his desire for high fashion, dancing, and royal women. He was a tough guy with an ego easily bruised. He was born into privilege and used that privilege to avoid the consequences of his miscreant behavior. His overconfidence in his military assessments led soldiers into a futile battle at Pamplona, and he suffered his own life-changing, disfiguring leg injury. But it is not this past that we want to consider, nor his vapid vanity that led him to have the bone in his leg rebroken and reset simply to look good in his tight boots. Ignatius offers us a lesson from the next phase of his life's journey. One that if we can learn it well, can help us avoid the pitfalls into which he fell, and instead embrace the means toward a life with deeper meaning that he finally came to understand. We know Ignatius, after some reading and reflection during this convalescence, decided to redirect his life. While he redirected his passions toward religious piety, he really didn't have a profound change in mindset. He was as vain and romantic as ever. He was determined to exceed the saints in holiness, to be more Franciscan than Francis, more Dominican than Dominic. He romanticized the lives of the saints. He was going to walk from Loyola in the Basque country to Jerusalem, and he hadn't completely given up swordplay. He was ready to kill a Moor that he thought had sullied Mary's honor by questioning her virginity. He remained the chivalrous soldier, protecting the damsel in distress. As a result of this conceited approach to faith, he lived a life of extreme asceticism. His hair and nails went without cutting. He fasted to the point of physical harm and permanently damaged his stomach. He was scrupulous to the point of despair. He contemplated suicide. His mistake? Not his desire to walk from Loyola to Jerusalem. Not his desire to be of service to God, but his prideful misconception that he could make it alone. He excluded himself from the circle of care and compassion. Instead, he tried to tough guy his way into God's grace by his spiritual athleticism, pushing his mind and body beyond limits that God did not demand. When we try to go at it alone, we will fall short of our destination. Our path will take unnecessary twists and needless turns. We will cut ourselves with shards of our own brokenness. Our path will dead end when we hit the wall that is ourselves. If we have the fortitude, we might get up and begin the same futile trek again and we will hit the same wall again and again. If we don't have that determination, we might settle for what is, we might isolate, we might give up. Maybe you have had your own cannonball moment or maybe you have yet to have that experience that turns your world upside down and inside and out. The experience that causes you to rethink everything you thought, you knew or understood. But life offers you one guarantee, you will. So, we can learn together now what Ignatius learned the hard way. How to speak with and how to listen to others. To yourself. If God is in all things, Sustaining all things, then God moves about in our interior life. It is the spirit that stirs our desires, turns our heads toward what is beautiful, what is creative, what is innovative, what is life-giving, what is generous, 
what is compassionate what it just it is the spirit moving about in the depth of our being who prods and coaxes us toward love how do we listen how do we know who's whisper to hear and what is being said we talk with others we have what ignatius called a spiritual conversation every sinner has a future every saint has a past every one of us is living in the present and it is the present and in the presence of others that we can here and now begin to discover and become the person the spirit is creating us to be there is a place for everyone in the spiritual conversation because the spirit of god is stirring in all of us no matter our circumstance no matter our experience no matter our talents our limitations our gifts our wants our disappointments no matter our loss no matter our gains no matter our failures no matter our successes everyone has a story to share and if we listen closely we may hear something that will change us we may hear something that may heal us we may hear something that will inspire us the way we are with god with each other and with creation may change for the good and we may say something that will change another heal another inspire another we may say something that may change how another is with god with others and with creation for the good in a spiritual conversation we seek to share not the superficial aspects of our life where we live what music we like what sports we play what we do for recreation in a spiritual conversation we reflect on and share what it is we are living for what is it that keeps us from that which we truly desire a spiritual conversation helps us to experience the grace we need to know and the freedom to choose that which god intends for us In a spiritual conversation, everyone has a voice because the spirit of God dwells in each of us. Everyone listens carefully with an open heart and open mind to what another is saying. We honor what we heard. We don't judge it. We reflect on how it made us feel and what thoughts it provoked. And we speak again with intention and clarity. We listen again with openness. And together, we find where the spirit is stirring. what god is calling us toward free from the past free to embrace the future let us take first steps on a pilgrimage not from loyola to jerusalem but a walk through our own hearts be attentive to the spirit stirring within ask for the eyes to see god in it all ask for the ears to hear what is god inviting you to ask for the freedom to respond then know now what it took ignatius loyola a while to understand God does not ask us to journey alone, but instead offers companions. Others who reflect, who are attentive and who too are searching for meaning, for purpose, for God. We are created to praise, reverence and serve God our Lord and by this means save our souls. God created all the things on the face of the earth to help fulfill this purpose. Let us take a moment to consider ourselves as created beings in both our beauty 
and our brokenness. Pray in gratitude for the gift of life. Pray in gratitude for the gifts in your life, body, mind, and spirit, and the experience of love. Pray beyond our physical imperfections and limitations. Pray beyond our struggle for an elusive physical ideal. Pray beyond our belief that our worth is tied to our looks, our agility, our strength, our speed, even our good health. What is it about your physicality for which you give thanks? What your physical limitations and imperfections tell you about what it means to be human? What does your desire for living tell about what it means to be human? Pray in gratitude for the gift of others. Pray beyond social alienations and fractured relationships. Pray beyond our social awkwardness and the feeling of not belonging. Pray beyond our social smugness, prejudices, and indifference to others. Pray beyond our desire to be like everyone else. What is our ongoing desire for love and friendship? Despite our experiences of broken relationship and loss, tell us about being human. Pray in gratitude for the gift of intellect. And pray in gratitude for curiosity, our creativity, our innovation, our inquiry, our ideas. Pray beyond our closed-mindedness, our intellectual blandness and boredom. Pray beyond our intellectual arrogance and need for certitude. What do you want to know? What is curiosity, imagination, questions, wanting to know more? Wanting to understand? Tell us about what it means to be human. What does it mean to be self-aware? From this, it follows that we are to use all these other things as much as they help us on our end, and ought to rid ourselves of the things this world that hinder us toward this end. Let us take a moment to consider all the other things in creation. Pray in gratitude to God who creates and sustains in every moment all things created. Pray in gratitude for the grandeur of creation, its breathtaking beauty and humbling majesty. The vast expanse of the universe, the smallest particle of matter, the constancy of nature, the intricate complexity of living beings. Who are we in the scheme of creation? What does it mean to be human within both the vastness and closeness of creation? For this, it is necessary to make ourselves indifferent to all created things as much as we are able, so that we do not necessarily want health rather than sickness, riches rather than poverty, honor rather than dishonor, a long rather than a short life, and so in all the rest. Desiring and choosing only what is most conducive for us to the end for which God created us. Pray in gratitude for our desires, for love, for life, and communion. Pray in gratitude for the freedom to choose first the kingdom of God, to pursue the love of God that first pursued us. Pray for the eyes to see clearly what draws us nearer to God and what leads us away. Give use the wisdom to know what helps and what hinders us living more faithfully. Pray in gratitude for the best of human experience. Noble actions, heroic efforts, stirring compassion, selfless sharing, endless curiosity, creativity and innovation, reconciliation, healing, peacemaking, solidarity, boundless love. Pray to be open to the wonder hidden in the ordinary, in the constant presence of another, a parent, a worker, a student, a friend, a teacher, a pastor, a neighbor, a classmate. 
mindful of the low voltage of grandeur that charges the everydayness, that runs through diligence, duty, patience, effort, practice, commitment. Ask yourself, what do I want? What do I want from life? What pulls me? What draws me? What leads me? What stirs my heart? Engages my mind? Sends my spirit rising? What is calling me? Who is calling me? Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to count the cost. To fight, and not to heed the wounds. To toil and not to seek for rest. To labor and not to ask for a reward. Save that of knowing that I do your will. Mm -hmm.